OpenAI has just announced they have created a text to video generator. This is something we've been talking about for a long time. It's super exciting. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down exactly what it can do, showing you all the news, and then also going over to X where we're gonna start breaking down what people are saying about this, some of the experiments they're doing. This is absolutely fascinating. Let's get into it. I'm gonna minimize myself on this. Um, but essentially, what you can see here is that you're creating video straight from text. So this is a direct competitor to obviously Runway and a couple other of these video uh, you know, creation tools. This isn't surprising as they've been kind of a leader or one of the top leaders in image creation. Um, so I think this is absolutely fascinating. But, you know, right, like they say here, SOAR is an AI model that can create realistic and generative images from text. Okay, let's go over some of the things that they're doing. This is a fascinating image that I actually saw, I think Ilya shared on Twitter. Uh, or Brockman shared on Twitter. But this, the prompt for this is a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with a warm glow, neon animated city sign as she wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress and black boots. This is fascinating. And what's amazing here, they've announced that these are up to one minute long videos. So like the detail on her face, like you can see the imperfections, you can see her earrings, you can see um, like so much about how she's in focus, the background is not. This is absolutely incredible cinematography. Now, this is all going along with my prediction I've been making on the podcast for a very long time that very soon we're gonna be able to direct our own entire movies. We'll be able to put our own actors and actresses in here. They'll probably get a royalty for being in our movie. We'll be able to direct an entire movie using these tools. This feels like we're getting closer than ever. Let's look at another example here. This is the prompt for this is several giant woolly mammoths approaching um, treading through a heavy snow, snowy meadow, their long woolly fur lightly blows in the wind as they walk snow covered, you know, dramatic snow. So literally we're seeing an incredible video here of woolly mammoths on like an Arctic tundra. This is high quality. This is incredible. This is better than anything I've seen. Of course, we've seen runway. That seems almost like animated GIFs kind of. The quality is not very high. This is very, very high. Now, what I will say is I'll put a caveat. I haven't actually tried. They're not actually allowing everyone to use this. They've just kind of made the announcement. They're showing the demos, um, but we not everyone has their hands on with it. There are a number of uh, influencers, I think, that are, are testing it out. Here's another incredible video. The prompt is a movie trailer featuring the adventures of a 30 year old spaceman wearing red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky salt desert cinematic style shot on a 35 millimeter film. This is incredible. The quality on this is amazing. This is like a cinematic um, movie, like a literal movie that is, is being played out before us. Here is another example that I thought was absolutely fascinating. This is a drone view of waves crashing against the rugged cliffs along Big Sur's Gary Point Beach. The crashing blue water creates white tipped waves while the golden light of the uh, of the uh, sun setting illuminates the rocky shore. This is like a full paragraph explaining, but this video looks like flawless stock like videography, like a stock video that you would pay a lot of money for. There's more, there's, you know, animated, um, there's animated animals. This is like, people are going to be able to create full animations, movies. Everything is going to get completely uh, changed and altered in what we're seeing here. There's another one that's a, a paperclip world of a coral reef with colorful fish and sea creatures. Very, very interesting. It's showing that they could do a bunch of different styles. They're doing one in portrait mode of a bird. Um, it's a Victorian, a Victoria crowned pigeon. Um, quality looks again, perfect. Then they're doing something, you know, kind of fun. It's a photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee. This one's kind of funny, um, but like you can imagine where this is going. Someone reading a book, um, it just says a young man in his 20s sitting on a piece of cloud in the sky reading a book. This is incredible. Like I, I cannot say the insane innovation that is going to come out of this. So in this big announcement on their website, they say, Quote, today Sonora is becoming available to red teamers to, ass to assess critical areas of harms or risks. We're also granting access to a number of visual artists, designers, and filmmakers to gain feedback on how to advance the model to be most helpful for creative professionals. We're sharing our research progress early to start working with and getting feedback from people outside of OpenAI and to give the public a sense of what AI capabilities are on the horizon. Then they have a number of other ones. There's like a wild west town that they're going through in insane quality. Uh, there's like a little gnome in like a snow globe kind of thing or uh, that looks amazing. A really close up view of someone's eyeball to just show you like every single um, 
you know, eyelash and their iris and uh, their skin. All of it is so, so phenomenal. And then, of course, they have one that's like a dancing rabbit because they got to do something funny. Um, they have one that's like a street market with tons of vendors and tents. And it's cinematic coming down from the sky and spinning, which is what I think is really, really impressive. Um, and then they have one that's like inside of a lab and there's like these little animals running around. They have one that's like tons of TVs on the wall. This is the quality here is mind blowing. I've never seen anything like this before. It is phenomenal. They say Sonora is able to generate complex scenes with multiple characters, specific types of motion and accurate detail of the subject and background. The model understands not only what the user is asked for in the prompt, but also how those things exist in the physical world. What's amazing is they have a video that's like the camera follows behind a white vintage SUV with a black rooftop as it speeds down a dirt road, blah, 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 blah. But like, the, the Jeep is like driving down the road and the camera is following it from above as if it's a drone. This is like something unlike anything you've ever seen. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, then they have like some other ones that are like a, you're on a train and you're going by a city. So it's like out the window. You can see the reflection of the person in the train. This is actually what's amazing is when it goes up against a dark background, the reflection of the person like comes into clear focus where you can see them. And then when you're not against the back dark background, you can just see the silhouette. Like this is insanity they do one that is um a drone search circling around some beautiful historic church buildings on a rocky outcropping that looks amazing they have an octopus like what i will say about this this isn't cartoonish these things look photo realistic every single one looks so so insane there's a cat in bed with someone that's laughing um there's a bunch of birds sitting on a tree as water flows below them there's people in a crowd in um you know celebrating chinese new year's um, this is amazing. They specifically say in all of this um, that the model has a deep understanding of language and the ability to accurately interpret prompts and generate compelling characters that express vibrant emotions. Sora can also create multiple shots within a single generated video that accurately persist um, characters and visual styles. So again, more videos of them scrolling through an art muse gallery and, you know, videos. This one is one of my, one that I think is most impressive. It's almost like a drone shot in Tokyo of like a couple holding hands, walking through a street market and it's snowing and the drone kind of zooms down from the sky and follows behind them. Absolutely phenomenal. There's one of a flower, like as it grows. So it's like a time lapse of the flower as it's slowly blooming. It looks so realistic. It's absolutely insane. There's even motion in the camera, which I think is really cool. Um, then there's, of course, one where there's like a robot in like a sci-fi kind of, um, you know, Blade Runner style cyberpunk setting. There's one where it is a close up on an artist, an old, an elderly man, um, but it's so close to his face. You can see every single hair in his beard. And it's so like the quality is absolutely phenomenal in all of this. There's one of like a wolf. It's kind of a cartoon, but it's howling, um, which would just be a good animation for a website. There's one where there's like floating sharks in a city downtown. These like impossible scenes that it never saw anywhere else, which I think is impressive. Of course, do they have to do one of dogs shaking snow off of their fur, which is really cute. What they did say is that the current model has some weaknesses. They said it may struggle with accurately simulating the physics of a complex scene and may not understand specific instances of cause and effect. For example, a person might take a bite out of a cookie, but afterwards the cookie may not have a bite mark. So the model might also confuse spatial details of a prompt, for example, mixing up left and right. And it might also struggle with precise descriptions of events that take place over time, like following a specific camera trajectory. Now, what I will say with all of that is that um, people will find solutions. You're gonna be there, people are gonna be making incredible movies with this stuff and they'll find solutions. If it doesn't show you when you, you know, take a bite of the cookie, if it doesn't show the imprint of your teeth in there, it's like they'll bite the cookie, then it'll flash to the next scene and then they'll just generate a video of like a cookie with a bite out of it. So like people will find solutions to these and when you watch a movie, there's so many cuts anyways, but I think this is so, so phenomenal. There's a guy running on a treadmill. There's a bunch of, you know, wolves playing in like a gravel, street there's a slow-mo of a basketball bouncing into like the rim of a basketball hoop and the camera's like in this gopro angle with fire exploding out of it so there's like funny things like that um there's like a chair that's like melting into the sand i think they're they demonstrated like a bunch of like issues that these videos can have like the chair just kind of appears in an archaeological site um there's like a grandma that's blowing out candles but you can see some of the flames on the candles are pointing in different directions so like that's obviously funny so there's like some funny little glitches but like honestly comparing this to runway or other ai image or video generators this is so far above anything i've seen anywhere else now they talk about safety this is something important to them they said 
We're taking several important steps ahead of making Sora available in OpenAI's products. We're working with red teamers, domain experts in areas like misinformation, hateful content, and bias who will adversarially be testing the model. We're also building tools to help detect misleading content um, as a detection classifier that we can tell when a video was generated by Sora. We will plan on including uh, C2PA metadata in the future if we deploy the model in an OpenAI product. In addition to us deploying new technologies to prepare for development, we're leveraging the existing safety methods that we're building for our products um, that use Dolly 3, which are applicable to Sora as well. For example, once in an OpenAI product, our text classifier will check and reject text input prompts that are in violation of our usage policy. This is interesting. They're getting, trying to do a lot of safety things. They don't want people to, you know, break the rules. They don't want them to, um, you know, especially they're saying uh, when requests have extreme violence, sexual content, hateful imagery, celebrity likenesses, right? They don't want deep fakes that could tarnish someone's image or the IP of others. So obviously they're kind of saying they're not gonna create Mickey Mouse or um, you know some Disney character doing something when Disney owns the IP to that. They said they've also developed robust image classifiers that are used to review the frames of every video generated to help ensure that it adheres to their usage policies before it's shown to the user. So what's fascinating here is like when you generate an image, it's just an image. But in this case, they have to review every single frame of a video. And these are 60 second long videos. <laughs> There's a lot of frames in there, right? So this is gonna take a ton of computational power, I'm assuming. They said, we'll be engaging policymakers, educators, and artists around the world to understand their concerns and identify positive use cases for this new technology. Despite extensive research and testing, we cannot predict all of the beneficial ways people will use our technology, nor all the ways people will abuse it. This is why we believe that learning from real world use is a critical component of creating and releasing increasingly safe AI systems over time. They found this exact same thing out um, when they were testing um, chat GPT, all of a sudden people were doing all sorts of crazy things with it and they were posting about it on Reddit. And that was a big way that they found out like issues that chat GPT could have and some of the misuses. And so I think they're going to be doing the same thing. Like people are scared about what this will be used for, but at the end of the day, they have to test it in the wild to actually see what people are going to be doing with it. And, uh, that sounds like, you know, the plan going forward, what they'll actually be, you know, doing. So absolutely fascinating. They talk about some of the research techniques, um, that they'll be using in all of this and how this is you know kind of working and they said soar is a diffusion model which generates a video by starting off with one that looks like static noise and gradually transforms it by removing the noise over many steps so they're using the exact same like diffusion strategy technique model that is generating images but now they're taking all of that diffusion all that static that's normally on the screen that gets clarified into an image and clarifying it into a video or frames of a video which is absolutely fascinating they say sora is capable of generating entire videos all at once or extending generated videos to make them longer this is kind of cool because i've used this you know the the image um, tool where it's like you ex you expand the side of an image and it does like generative fill. You could be able to do that with videos except making them longer. You take a video clip and you're like, okay, now make this person do X, Y, and Z thing, which I think is going to be phenomenal for creating actual movies. They say, by giving the model foresight of many frames at a time, we're sol we've solved a challenging problem of making sure a subject stays the same even when it goes out of, temp out of view temporarily. Similar to GPT models, Sora uses a transformer architecture unlocking superior scaling performance. We represent videos and images as collections of smaller units of data called patches even or each of which is akin to a token by GPT. By unifying how we represent data, we can train diffusion transformers on a wider range of visual data that was, you know, not possible before, spanning different durations, resolutions and aspect ratios. So this is so cool. They can do all these different aspect ratios. We've seen portrait, we've seen landscape they say Sora builds on past research in Dolly and GPT models. It uses the recaptioning techniques of Dolly 3, which involves generating highly descriptive captions for the visual training data. As a result, the model is able to follow a user's text instructions in the generated video more faithfully. In addition to being able to generate a video solely from text instructions, the model is also able to take an existing still image and generate a video from it. This is amazing, right? You throw an image in here that you generate on, let's say, Mid Journey or anywhere else, and all of a sudden it's animating the image's contents with accuracy and attention to all of the small details. So they also said that the model can also take an existing video and extend it or fill in missing frames. Um, they Sora, they say this, they said, quote, Sora serves as a foundation for models that can understand and simulate the real world, a capability we believe will be important, uh, will be an important milestone for achieving AGI. This is 
absolutely incredible. They said all the videos on this page, if you've been watching this video and not just listening to the podcast, um, I've been you know showing a ton of videos and all of the videos on that page that I was showing, um, if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, were generated directly by Sora without modification. They're, I think they're taking a dig perhaps at other people, maybe Google who does some demos that uh, you know they did some modification and editing. This is absolutely fascinating. Huge kudos to the entire OpenAI team for releasing Sora, an incredible piece of technology. And um, in a future video, I'll be breaking down what people are saying about this on Twitter and online, but overall, an amazing piece of technology. Um, and I'll be definitely updating you on how this is rolled out and how this is being used when this is available for the general public in the future.